So the first thing is you want to think about not what comes next, but what comes next after what comes next. I want you to play chess instead of checkers. In chess, we think five moves ahead. In checkers, we think two moves ahead. Always think ahead. That's a big key to being a good leader. It's absolutely important. As you think about change in your club, I want you to imagine things being different. But I want you to focus on things being better. Some of you are paralyzed about changing your club location. Paralyzed. You're meeting in a church basement with cinder block walls. There's no Wi-Fi. The light is terrible. And you can't figure out why young people don't join your club. A young lady told me a little bit ago, she says, when I don't have Wi-Fi, I feel naked. I thought it was an interesting analogy. But what she's trying to say is she needs Wi-Fi to be comfortable. And if they're going to come meet and have lunch with you every Wednesday, they're not going to be comfortable if there's no Wi-Fi. They think you're an old person's club. Remember what I told you about the visitor's perception, right? Okay, so uh, also write this down or circle it in your notes. Opportunity is seldom convenient. Your chance to leave the church basement will not be when you most desire to do it. In fact, we know Rotary Clubs that have been kicked out of the church basement. Anybody? There's a club in my district that was asked to leave the church. And uh, to this day, they're scratching their head about that one. So sometimes change is thrust upon us. Sometimes change is, we can make change, uh, we can be the architect of change. That's the idea. So we also know that changing quickly is usually better than changing slowly. How many have taken off a Band-Aid in the last few days? There's different philosophies about this. Some people say just take it off and be done with it. Some people want to just enjoy the anguish, you know? <laughs> Some people just like the drama. And so what I want you to encourage you to do is do things quickly and establish what Seth Godin calls, write this down, fast feedback loops. Because when you're getting feedback quickly, you can course correct, right? You can course correct. And faster is usually better. Who's the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean? Charles Lindbergh. Who's the second person? Who cares is right. But I'll tell you, the Bert Hinkler family cared deeply. It was Bert Hinkler, ladies and gentlemen. So you not only want to have a target of what you want to do, you want to have a bullseye, and you want to aim for that bullseye. That's the idea. We also know that people don't like to take orders, ladies and gentlemen, they like to take part. So let's figure out a way that we can involve people in the club and not just tell them what to do, but get their best ideas and help them be part of the process. It's really important.